Michigan Out of Doors Online is brought to you in part by Mr. Muskie Charters, offering full-service guided fishing trips for walleye, muskie, bass, and sturgeon on Lake St. Clair and the Detroit and St. Clair Rivers. Booking information is online at mrmuskiecharters.com. Animals have the ability to smell scent half a mile away. But what good is an attractant if the animals have to be close to smell it? Introducing an industry-first vapor system. Vapor lasts longer and travels farther. Wind scent by Fourth Arrow. Active vapor for deadly success. Hey everyone, welcome to Michigan Out of Doors. I'm Jenny Olson and we've got an exciting all new show for you this week. The entire TV crew hit the water out of Frankfurt on Lake Michigan along with Bob Garner and retired DNR photographer Dave Kenyon. We had a lot of great fishing action and a lot of laughs. You won't want to miss that story. And Jimmy's been working on some other fun stuff for us this week too. Well, that's right, Jenny. We do have a few more things on this week's show. We're going to actually have a good salmon recipe to kind of go along with that great fishing story that we're going to kick off this week's show with. And then we're going to head to the goose fields, the opening weekend of the early goose season, which is my kind of unofficial kickoff to fall. A great hunt with some great folks. You won't want to miss that. Lots of good stuff on this week's show. You stay tuned. I'm Jimmy Gretzinger. It's time for Michigan Out of Doors. From the first spring rains to the soft summer breeze, dancing on the pine forest floor. The autumn colors catch your eyes, here come the crystal winter skies. It's Michigan, Michigan out of doors. Someday our children all will see this is their finest legacy. The wonder and the love of Michigan as the wind comes whispering through the trees. The sweet smell of nature's in the air. The Great Lakes to the quiet stream Shining like a sportsman's dream It's the love of Michigan We all share Michigan Out of Doors is presented by By Country Smokehouse Offering a variety of meat products Country Smokehouse is located Three miles south of I-69 and M-53 Just south of Imlay City Country Smokehouse is a meat processor A butcher and a destination for sportsmen By G5 Outdoors Makers of the Quest and Prime Bows Manufactured and designed in Memphis, Michigan. G5 offers a line of archery bows, broadheads, and accessories. On the web at g5outdoors.com. By KL Outdoor, a Muskegon manufacturer of sportsmen's outdoor products for over 30 years. Featuring the terrain line of hard-sided hunting blinds designed for quick setup and removal with quiet operation. For more information and other products, kloutdoor.com. Michigan-based Vanguard manufactures an array of binoculars ranging in size and design, and backed by a lifetime warranty. Discover Vanguard Sporting Optics at vanguardworld.us. We are here in one of my favorite towns here in the state of Michigan. Of course, I seem to be saying that more and more. But anyways, Frankfurt, top of the list. It's just a great place. And this is our annual trip that we do with Bob Garner every year. Now, he brings different people every year. This year, we have our whole crew. So myself and Jenny, Jordan, Gabe, we've never all been out on the same boat together here out of this port. We also have our good friend Dave Kenyon along, who used to be the photographer, videographer for the DNR. And we're going to kind of learn about his career a little bit today. And look at some of the great photos he's taken over the years. Uh, he's captured the state of Michigan probably better than about anybody ever has. So we're excited for a big day of fishing. We're out on the Mai High again uh, with Steve Martin, great fisherman. Been at this port for a long time. Wind is blowing a little bit, but hopefully there'll be just enough chop on the water to get those baits moving and we'll see. I'm sure we're gonna start with some uh, Lakers, go north and then we'll probably head out to deeper water for Kings and we'll see what happens. Let's go. We're up on uh, West Platte Bay Reef, 
Uh, we're going to target lake trout for a couple hours. Uh, the lake trout fishing has been real good. Lots of bait fish. They're in here eating alewives and goldies. Nice sized trout. We're going to look for a few trout first, and then we're going to probably switch it over and look for kings. And so if somebody's not familiar with a lake trout setup, what, what are you actually running and how deep and all that kind of good stuff? We're running mostly trash can dodgers and uh, some green weaver spin doctors with uh, uh, spinning glows behind them. And uh, we stay fairly close to bottom. Most of our stuff's in contact with bottom when we're, you know, when we're targeting trout. We have a couple wireline divers with uh, small fluted dodgers on bottom. Jenny made me take the first fish, that's yeah. why. It, yeah. Way That's to go, why Bobby. I did that, so. Yeah. All right. I don't know if I've ever seen Garner catch a fish. We had to make sure he still knew how to do it. Yeah. Yeah, well, it's pretty easy with the lake trail. All right. Good job, Bob. And you know what, though? They're great fish. And the cool part, the difference between catching these fish back in 75, when I really started 42 years later, the difference is they taste better. I think they're eating the gobies or whatever. But they taste much better out of Lake Michigan. They're they're closer to some of the Lake Superior trout I had. How's it feel, Dave? It feels good. <laughs> so Bob, we're fishing with Dave Kenyon today. He just retired from the DNR as their photographer for a few decades. Photographer, videographer, yes. storyteller. He he told the DNR story probably better than anyone. And there have been some remarkable storytellers over the years. And you are you guys were the first ones that started working together because we've worked with Dave on the show here for years and years and he's given us some awesome footage to use on the show that we wouldn't have been able to get otherwise. Did you start that relationship? Yeah, pretty much. And and pretty well he you know, he could have that relationship with anyone, but I recognize what a gem he was. I mean, not only is the guy a great storyteller, but he's got an eye. I've often said that if I could see the world through Dave Kenyon's eyes for one day for one day that, that my life would be complete because he looks at things differently than the rest of us do. And he's just got a trained eye for it. And he understands the mechanics of everything, you know, I, he, and how, how, uh, how cameras work and all that sort of stuff. But the difference between Dave Kenyon and a photographer is Dave just understands what the world looks like. And he's, and he's, he's eager to show it to you, too. <laughs> If it wasn't for Bob Garner and the work of Dave Kenyon when he was working for the DNR in the early 1990s, there is a very good chance a Michigan Out of Doors TV, well, it would simply not exist. Bob did so much to get the show restarted, and Dave played a crucial role at the time in helping get content from across the state. They both played a very important role in keeping the outdoor television legacy alive and well in this great old state. Well, this one's got some shoulders, I think. I tend to get lucky with the rod selection process. I think we got a king here. We're going in reverse order by age. So because what is Bob it, Jimmy? because Bob is so old, he had to go first. <laughs> then Dave, then Jenny. Now we're to us young folk. Oh, <laughs> hey, 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 hey. <laughs> well, it looks like the the star. Of Michigan Out of Doors, the host, Jimmy Gretzinger, has on a, a fish that I don't think it's a world beater, I don't think it's world class, but I think it's going to be a real, real dandy. In fact, in his case, we'll just call it a gym dandy. <laughs> hey! Oh, that is wow. a king salmon right there. That is. Well, we've hit a few kings uh, this evening so far. We've come up here to really target lake trout, but the water's warmed up, so we've moved out a little bit. And we've, we've hit a few kings, so things are looking pretty good so far. And what's the plan for the rest of the night? Uh, we're going to switch over to more kings as it gets darker here and uh, target kings. Hopefully, some more move in here. Going on here, Gabriel. Got a, got a great fish on here, man. Got the bluffs right behind us of Frankfurt, and uh, it is a beautiful place to be fishing. Steve Martin of uh, My High Charters has got us on fish. 
We're with a bunch of friends, Jenny and Jimmy and Jordan and uh, Dave Kenyon and Bob Garner yeah. is right behind us. So we're having a lot of fun tonight. It would be neat to just be a fly on the wall on this boat and listen to all the stories that are flying around. There's not too many that are true. I don't no, think. no, some of them are true, but they've been stretched immensely. Yes, they have. Yeah. Whoa. We've got a couple of uh, kinks here the last half hour or so, which is a little early. Um, now I think we got a lake trout on this one right on the bottom. So feels like a good fish though. So you know you've been in the yeah, industry for a while. Pull tight on it. <laughs> and feeling very old, by the way, when uh, a young first mate like Travis just reminded me that when he was, what, eight or nine years old, uh, I did a television show with him out on a boat, a charter boat out here at Lake Michigan, reeling in a big old salmon. So. Uh, yeah, that makes me... He's now 38. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the kid's now 14, five years. <laughs> I thought hanging out with Jordan was making me feel old, but... <laughs> Man, beautiful fish. That's pretty awesome. Hard day at the office. Nothing like a lake trout. And, and I don't know what there is about Lake Michigan lake trout, but there's so much better eating than they were like 40 years ago when I started fishing them. 40 years ago. Was, well, that's was, what they say. It was 50 years ago. It was, I'm just, it was, it was, it was, more, okay, it was over 40 years ago. Bob, this is a camera. This, you talk right into this thing. This is the lens. Really? Your viewership is right there. You got to talk to them. Yeah. You, you remember how to do this? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Yeah. Don't take any grief, Bobby. We support you. <laughs> We've had a lot of fun. You know, I can't imagine a trip any better than going out with the Fab Four of Michigan Out of Doors. My old friend Dave Kenyon, who had a lot of stuff we've done together. This is all good. This is all good. Fish are a bonus, but we're with Steve Martin, so you know you're going to get fish. Woohoo! <laughs> Look at that cooler. We're filling her up. Nice work, Travis. Look at that. It's a good day out here on my high. Having fun and hauling in a load of fish. Sweet. Nice. All right. I'll take that. Well, it's getting late here in Frankfurt. And what we've got, what hopefully is a nice king on. Man, it's a nice fish. That is a big salmon. That's awesome. Special thanks to Bob for making this trip possible, and thanks to Dave for his countless stories and photos over the years that helped capture the moments that happen in the out of doors. What a night, telling stories, big fish, sunsets, and old friends. Just simply a perfect night here in Michigan's out of doors. One thing I love about the early goose season that just kind of starts off the hunting seasons with a great time of the year to be in the woods and the early part of September is just a ton of fun. I was able to get out with some friends here locally, kind of in the West Michigan area. We had a great day on the water. season to me is the unofficial kickoff to fall. So the first weekend of the season I had camera in hand with a group of folks itching to down some early season geese. Well we got a, a buddy and his dad hunting with us today. They want a trip off of our uh, banquet. Okay. And um, so we're going to try and get them some geese today. And what's splinter spot here? What's going on here? It's a Amish pond. Um, a lot of geese been here so I said we're gonna try and do it up. And you have to scout these birds quite a bit. Oh yeah, yeah. I would do a lot of scout, and I drive a lot of miles to to scout. So okay. they've but, been here though, eh? Oh yeah. Yesterday, probably 
two, three hundred here. So, all right. Don't mean a guarantee because I know how that is. But <laughs> we're gonna give it a whirl. Yeah, we won't say the G word. That's yeah. for sure. Yep. Well, the early morning seemed to have just a few single geese in the air, but there was one that was heading our way. Well, after the first bird, I saw that I needed to move my blind. But what a great start to the morning. And you know, Mike loves to donate hunts like he did here today. Well, I love to do what I'm doing right now. So either for youth or for anybody, I just uh, my gig. Yeah. Love to goose hunt. So nice. if I get a chance to get anybody out, it's, it's a blessing for me. So Cool. And do you uh, do you prefer these water hunts, or do you like the field hunts, or does early it... season I prefer the water because I like to sit and wait for them to come back. And we can put a hurting on them. Yeah. So will they fly all day, or kind of when when are the birds moving typically? They should be coming here in the next I'd say half an hour hour. Okay. They should be starting to come back to water. So good deal. So we're in the right spot. We're gonna be definitely here pretty quick. <laughs> Hopefully. <laughs> Naomi Wildrum and her dad Dave were here today as well. And Naomi, as just a high schooler, has become quite the dog trainer. Nice job, um, this is Bear. I, um, I got him when he was seven weeks old. Uh, he's three and a half now. So okay. I've, I've trained him myself um, since he was a little puppy. And I don't know, I, we uh, run and hunt tests together too, um, UKC. He is uh, one pass away from his hunting retriever champion title. Wow. Now, so what does that mean? So he has one more trial he's got to do? or? Yep. He needs one more pass and a ribbon, and then we'll have our title. So. Nice. Oh, so what do you like about run, training dogs? Um, well, that was kind of how I first got into hunting, um, was my dad's dogs, because I was too little to shoot. So So what do you do to train a dog like this? To, like, What kind of stuff do you work on, on a, especially when they were younger, even now, just to kind of get them to be a better retriever? Um, Obedience is really important, so like staying in there while the geese are coming in so that he doesn't flare them and they, they're gone. Um, and then, of course, retrieves and blind retrieves, um, marking multiple birds that fall. That's some of the stuff we work on. Well, everybody was scrambling to get to their blinds, and it looked like Bear, well, he was going to get a chance to practice marking multiple birds. Well, with five guns today, we had quite the pile of birds starting to accumulate. We had a handful of singles early in the morning, but the hundreds of birds that Mike had talked about, they were starting to descend. As soon as we could get most of the birds back in, there were that more awesome. on the horizon. <laughs> <laughs> well, we were close to a limit now, and it was getting close to 11 in the morning. It seemed like Mike was right on with his prediction. Mike, you called it. Well, <laughs> that's the way it's supposed to happen, so. Wow. Yeah. That was a lot of birds. Yeah. Now, this happened a few times today, and I thought it was kind of fun to watch. So sit back for a minute and just look at the determination of a bird dog as he chases down this bird. Well, we only needed two more birds as this group headed in to have our limit of 25. Just need two. Get him. Got him. 
Well, there you have it. A perfect morning. Now, it would have been perfect without a limit, but that always has such a nice ring to it. Guys shot well. Dog was awesome. Weather was perfect. Well, what do you think of that, young fella? It, it was due. <laughs> it was due. We waited, and then they, they come through. Man, that was a lot of birds. Yeah. Mike, Mike had us on the birds. <laughs> Well, we took our pictures and told and retold stories of the morning. I know the goose opener isn't really the official kickoff to the fall, but for me, well, it kind of is. And if this fall goes anything like this morning did, well, then I can't wait. All right, nice job, boys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> hey, everybody, we are here with Jim Wood once again at Antlers Fireside Grill, just in the Canadian Lakes area, right outside of that uh, part of the state. And Jim, we got some salmon here. Yep. What are we doing here today? We're going to do a salmon wellington, so it's a salmon baked in puff pastry. Ooh. But we're going to add some things to it uh, as part of the stuffing. So we're going to have some cream cheese and some crab and some mushrooms, so Parmesan cheese. Pretty simple to do? It's actually, yeah, it's going to come together real quick. Okay. You'll see. Well, let's so, get started. What do we need right. to do? We're going to get our pan heated up. Okay. We're going to add some butter to it. Now, is this a dish that you guys do here at all or no? We've done variations of it. Okay. Never the one that I'm about to show you guys. Oh, this is a Have first. you ever cooked this dish before? Nope. Oh, good. But hey, <laughs> it's fine. So we're going to saute some mushrooms. Now, does crab and salmon, is that kind of a, is that a normal thing? Do they go well together? Yeah, or? they go great together. Huh. Yeah. Okay. Also going to add some fresh garlic here. Now, is this something we do all in one pan, or we do it, we do the stuffing in one pan, and then okay. we're going to put everything on the puff pastry and wrap the salmon in it. And then that will go in the oven then for a little. It's going to go in the oven. Yep, for about ten minutes. Okay. All right. So once we get those sweated down, then we're going to add a little bit of arugula, okay. which is basically just like a bitter green. Got a lot of peppery notes to it. Now, you, you don't have to make this exact recipe. I mean, you can add or take away anything you want, really. Because hmm. yeah, we did a venison recipe, you said, right? Yes, sir, yep. With the Wellington kind of a thing. Yep, that had cream cheese. We put ham in it. Okay. We did a roasted garlic cream cheese with that, though. So once we get that arugula wilted down, we're going to add a little salt. Now, is this strictly a, would you only do salmon, or would, could you substitute a different kind of fish in Lake it? trout would go great. Uh, any of your thicker cuts, because if you throw a thinner cut in puff brace, it's just going to overcook in the oven and dry out. Okay. So here we have a little bit of sherry, so you're going to want to back up just in case this... Nice. I'm going to cook that down. All right, then we're going to add some cream cheese. And I've got some green onion. You don't want to burn the cream cheese. You're just trying to melt it hmm. so you can incorporate all the other ingredients in it. Wow. We're going to add our crab. Wow. We're just going to turn our heat off now. And then how long are we going to put this in the oven for? I mean, approximately 10 minutes. Okay. Uh, it could be, you know, anywhere between 8 and 15 minutes, depending on how big. It all depends on how big your fillet is, really. And then how do you know, I mean, you're just trying to just, once the salmon's done, that's, I mean, can you tell by the pastry by looking at it? Yeah, what? usually by the time the puff pastry is dark and golden, this will be, okay. it, it'll be cooked. And gotcha. then right at the end, we're going to add just a little bit of Parmesan. Next, place the salmon in the pastry, making sure to add a little salt. Stretch the pastry to fit over the salmon, pinching the ends to help hold the pastry together through the cooking process. Finally, vent the pastry to help release steam. Then about 10 minutes in the oven, and you're good to go. Okay, Jim, we just got this out of the oven. It looks phenomenal. What else are we gonna do here to finish this off? Well, because it's a, it's a big meal, as you can tell, I and mean, that's, that's yes. good for two people. We're just gonna serve it with a light salad. So all we have in here is a few different types of green. Okay. And this simple, uh, this is Dijon and white balsamic vinaigrette that we make here. Okay. Just gonna give that a toss. And so the name of this dish is? Crab Stuffed Salmon Wellington.
Thanks for joining us this week for Michigan Out of Doors. Make sure you check us out online next time you get a chance. You can do it a few different ways. You can check us out on our website at michiganoutofdoorstv.com. You'll see old and new episodes there, as well as all of our wild game recipes that you see here on the show. That's michiganoutofdoorstv.com. Or you can check us out on social media at Michigan Out of Doors TV. We're online every few days letting you know where we are and where we're headed next. Speaking of where we're headed next, we'll be covering all corners of the state this weekend for the special deer seasons coming up. Good luck to all of you hunters out there. We've got a lot of exciting stuff headed your way. Well, Jenny, you're right. There is a lot going on this time of the year. And of course, this upcoming weekend is the youth deer season. I'm going to be with my youngest child over in the Clare area with some good friends at a tent camp over there. You won't want to miss that. Jenny and Gabe are going to be heading to the Upper Peninsula for a really cool youth hunt up that way. And then, of course, we've got the small game season kicking off and so much good fishing right now. I tell you what, what a great time of the year to be a sportsman here in the great state of Michigan. If we don't see you in the woods or on the water, hopefully we'll see you right back here next week on your PBS station. Michigan Out of Doors is presented by by Greenstone Farm Credit Services, making recreational land ownership possible across Michigan and Northeast Wisconsin. Begin your land financing journey at one of Greenstone's 37 locations or visit greenstonefcs.com. By Metalloid Firearms and Sports, developers of environmentally friendly firearm maintenance products for cleaning and protecting your firearms metal, as well as wood and leather components, on the web at metalloidfirearmsproducts.com. By the Michigan Chapters of Safari Club International, for over 40 years, SCI has been protecting hunters' rights and promoting wildlife conservation here in Michigan and around the world. SCI chapter locations can be found on the web at firstformichigan.org. By the Michigan Petroleum Association and the National Oil Heat Research Alliance, advocating the advantages of oil heat for home and environment through products like BioHeat Oil, which blends biodegradable materials into a renewable fuel source. Learn more at oilheatamerica.com. Closed captioning provided by Marvo Mineral, makers of Lucky Buck, deer management products including minerals to supplement deer diets year-round to improve health and antler growth. When I want to far away, a dream stays with me night and day. It's the road that leads to my home state. I am a Michigan man. Changing seasons paint the scene.